What's up everyone, Glenn Lentz here. Welcome back to the 12 Days of Plug and Plays. And this is not gay. Today we're going to be talking about this little gem. One of the 300 billion Spongebob plug and plays that were ever made. This is the Spongebob Squarepants Jellyfish Dodge plug and play. Now like I said, it's very much designed like an Atari 2600 control, which isn't the worst, you know. And this one's actually designed fairly decent. You get an A and B button, of course all the standard fare. A menu button, an on-off button, there's a light on there to indicate when it's on and off. I played one Spongebob plug-and-play that I had uh, a number of years ago. It's one of the many, and they all have different games on it. But yeah, now we're going to play this one. I actually have two of these, and I still got another Spongebob plug-and-play game somewhere around here that maybe someday I'll get to. Right off the bat, this thing doesn't feel that bad. It actually feels kind of like a quality product. You know, the, the buttons are nice and responsive and stuff. There's, you know... Everything feels solid for the most part. It doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything. I mean, none of these age well. But this one's not bad. And this one's been tossed around some. Like, you can tell some other kid had it before me. It's all scraped up and stuff. But Anyway, let's take a look at this and see how much it tarnishes SpongeBob's good name. Now, who doesn't love SpongeBob? SpongeBob's awesome. Even at my age, I still love fucking SpongeBob. I loved running Stimpy growing up, and SpongeBob was kind of like the next evolutionary step in cartoons like that. He's wacky, he's goofy, he's got his fart humor, he's gross. It's awesome. Right away when you start this up, you'll be greeted with the SpongeBob SquarePants song. It's actually pretty faithful. The graphics, too, they're pretty decent. It's what you've come to expect on other plug and plays. Standard 16 bit fare, kind of like what you'd see on Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. So the presentation's alright. Not bad. And once again, like other plug and plays, you got four games to play. You got the jellyfish dodge, and in this one, you just dodge jellyfish for as long as you can. There's different power ups you can get. The guide and collide, it's just a stupid, mindless puzzle game where you place a fan in a certain area to, to direct the jellyfish over to SpongeBob so you can catch them. I never know what to do, so I just roam around with a joystick and just press buttons until something happens and usually I win. Then you got the snowball showdown and it says multiplayer. There's a multiplayer option. How the fuck do you play multiplayer on this? Was it like turn based? Kinda stupid and ambitious if you ask me. Anyway, how do you play this? There's like a power up meter where you gotta wait for it to go back and forth and get it in the middle just so you can build the right power and the right trajectory just to throw a snowball at Patrick. Once you memorize the controls and the trajectory and how much power you need to throw a snowball right at Patrick you just do it three or four times and Patrick's defeated. Kind of mindless, but still kind of playable. And then you got the Sponge Pop. And what does this look like? It's an Atari 2600 game. It's like Brick Attack or Arachnoid. You bounce the ball around off of SpongeBob's head. You keep breaking these bubbles. And there's like a Krabby Patty feature in the right hand corner. You're supposed to like build a Krabby Patty or something with it. I, I don't know. I just it, I just played it. I did whatever with it. Didn't pay much attention to that side of the screen. It is what it is. Once again on this plug and play there's a save feature. Why? Why is there a save feature? Can anyone answer me why is there a save feature? Because these games are all the same thing over and over again until the end of time. Nothing changes. There's no need to save. Do you really need to save your high score on the Sponge Bob Jellyfish Dodge plug and play. Is it really that imperative? Other than that, the controls on it, they're okay for what it is. All in all, this plug and play is just to sell the novelty of SpongeBob. You're just buying the name pretty much. You get a small variety of games and places to go to, some different artworks, you know, some different music, but you're still doing the same things over and over for all of eternity. And the difficulty never really ramps up much. It's just boring and repetitive. The one thing I'd like to say with a lot of these plug and plays, just playing a lot of these, especially like the Power Rangers ones when I was playing them, it kind of feels like maybe there's some, you know, up and coming game developers that just kind of want to break into the field. And maybe this is their first job. They're doing the best they can with what they're given. I'm hoping that there's some truth to that. Not that it's just some shitty company just trying to sell you a cheap cash grab. Well, there you have it, people. There is the SpongeBob Jellyfish Dodge plug and play game system. There's not really much more to say about this thing. Is it worth 20 bucks? No. None of these were worth 20 bucks. I could see it going for 7 to $10, somewhere in that region. They're all worth about that, 7 to $10. But I don't know, this, this is one of the most worthless ones. Okay, never mind. It's still worth more than the prior ones we just played on this channel. Except for the pinball one. That one was awesome. But that's it for this one. I gotta go, guys. There's still a lot more to get through, so make sure you tune in tomorrow for the next one. I will see you guys later.